Hey, Matthew here from Net Canada. Hope you're doing great today. I just wanted to say that I am so excited to share this video that I made with you guys. Um, I was recently down in New York City and had the amazing privilege of visiting the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. And they're a super, super cool order. So full of holy guys. Yeah, it was, it was amazing to go visit them. Anyways, one of the guys that I met, one of the brothers, his name was Brother Colby, and he had a really beautiful heart. Uh, just in the way that I saw him interact with others and um, when we were out on the streets and he was praying with other people and listening to them, I really saw Christ in his interactions with other people. So I asked if I could film a short video series and being the humble man that he is, uh, he was a little bit tentative at first, but he eventually agreed to it and uh, they were okay with me filming some footage of them during our time of ministry on the street. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I thought it'd be appropriate to share during this time of preparation. Um, yeah, just as the CFR brothers and their order are just a very beautiful example of what it is to prepare for the coming of Christ um, in our hearts. So I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, I'm Brother Colby Immaculata. I'm originally from Pennsylvania and um, I joined the, the CFR Friars in 2010 as a postulant and made vows in 2000. 12 and then final vows in 2016, which means no turning back. Well, a lot of the saints, probably all of them, had the wood of the cross before their mind's eye, contemplating the love of Christ, who was nailed to the cross. You know, it's a ho horrific, it was ugly, it was, I mean, words can't describe how um, horrific it was. You could see it in Our Lady's sorrow, the sins of the world that nailed Jesus to the but if you look very closely, there's something even more beautiful than God's Son being, God Himself being nailed to the cross. That He laid down His life for us. So it's a constant reminder when you see wood, particularly uh, a cross, a wooden cross, reminds you of the power of God's love. Reaching every single soul, no soul is excluded, even if they don't believe God loves them. Even if they don't believe that He exists, they exist because creator. <laughs> he adores them. So it constantly reminds me, even when you go into the chapel and you kiss the wood of the floor, the wood of the altar, it constantly reminds you of Jesus. Sin has made a mess, and then when people see the mess of the world, they blame God for it. God does not uh, want uh, division, he doesn't want hatred, he doesn't want us to kill each other, he doesn't want us to lie, he doesn't want, he, he wants us to love. Even though our skins might look different, or uh, our personalities are different, we're all human beings, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are still his children. So God is not the problem, come to God and he'll fix your problem. The door is a very busy place. <laughs> it's a lot of traffic coming in and out. And it's it's a cross too. You know, um, wearing the habit is a cross because it draws attention when you have to learn to be inconvenienced. Sometimes you're rushing somewhere, you know, you gotta learn how to stop and give time to people, even though it may be hard. But then Jesus says, knock and, and the door will be open to you. Come in and have supper with me. Eat with me, have the intimacy with me. I want to talk to you as a father talks to uh, a son, a daughter, a friend. And when you talk to someone, you look at them in the face, eye to eye, you listen. Um, there's a holy embrace there. If you don't read the gospel, you won't see it, you won't hear it. And a lot of times you hear a hard word, you give up on the whole gospel. Like when Jesus has to repent, turn away from our sins, I'm like, oh, I don't want to give this up, give that up. But in reality, it's really beautiful. Repentance is really beautiful. It's a turning away from something that is giving you anxiety, depression, worry, all division, all the self-hatred, the hatred of others. And then Jesus in return wants you to give those things up, all those things that break the, his commandments. And he wants to give himself to you as the Redeemer. And he heals all those who he the key to this is prayer, persistence in prayer, at the door, keep knocking on Jesus' door, and he, uh, he has a plan. We give up because we don't get what we want, but he's working in you now even more beautiful. We just got to keep persevering in prayer, 
and he'll give us something even more beautiful than what we even expected. He wants us to see not just the outward appearance, but the interior and his presence, even though we don't see him physically. He's in the bread of life. In John chapter 6, he go, John explains a discourse on, on the Eucharist. And that's where I first really began to be healed, was going in the presence of, of the Eucharist and just spending time there. And I didn't even believe at first. And then through Our Lady of Fatima, all the, the prayers devoted to the Eucharist, to Jesus and the bread of life. And reading John chapter 6, it's like this peace is obviously coming in this room. And it's not coming from the walls or the chairs or any office any object in the room except for what, who is on the altar. Um, in every church, the Blessed Sacrament is reserved. And, you know, go there and you'll find out. Spend time there to, and ask for faith. If you don't believe, just ask and he'll give it to you. I could go on and on. I like making rosaries with wooden beads. Though any rosary is good, there's a significance about the wooden beads. It's, it's, it's particularly more beautiful. It's Reminds me of the wood of the cross, and some some wood that I use is, is actually a seed. It's like the uh, Job Sears, Mother Teresa's sisters use those, and uh, and it reminds me of seeds of honoring Our Lady and the incarnation with the Hail Mary, full of grace, and all those Hail Marys are being Our Lady is planting around the the throne of God in heaven. And they'll be waiting, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death, they'll be waiting there for us. Through the grace of the incarnation, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, Our Lady leads us to the sacraments, which cleanses us of our sins, which is the presence of Jesus, the presence of mercy. Um, and it's true. Everybody has a vocation, and uh, whether you're called to religious, or to called to be a mother, and the father, or a single, whatever in life. You could be a, a doctor, a nurse, I mean, not talking about uh, a career, we're talking about a relationship with God in your vocation as a son or a daughter of the father and how he has called you to that. And everybody is called to be holy. You don't have to be religious to be holy. You could be a layman and woman, whatever God is calling you to do in your life. It's a life of prayer, but prayer looks different from a mother and a father to a religious. They have children and their prayers can be powerful in the present moment, working with like short prayers. And to know your vocation, you have to spend time with God. You have to ask him, whoa, what is your plan for my life? A lot of us, including myself, have went out and made my own plans and they turned into a disaster. Maybe some don't turn into disasters, but you're doing fine, but um, maybe not fulfilled, let's say. not fulfilled there. We have to ask God about that, read the gospel, and read the lives of the saints. They're great catechists, witnesses of vocations. St. Therese is, was a Carmelite nun. I think pretty much everybody probably knows her. She's a holy saint and she's the little way. It gives everybody hope. She, she pondered that, what is my vocation? Everybody has a different part of the body of Christ. And she came to know that the, the church has a heart. Her vocation is to be the heart and love. And uh, that was her, that's her vocation is love. And everybody's called to love. Um, isn't it beautiful though? Like, um, you don't have to be uh, anybody else, you just be yourself. A lot of times when we do find our vocation, we find ourselves carrying a cross. You're not worthy to follow me unless you pick up your cross and follow me. And we, we tend to not trust when the cross gets heavy. We tend to want to run away from that. The cross is where love is. And the cross is where, where purification happens. And, and that's the whole meaning of Jesus sanctifying us through, through the cross. Washing us with his blood and his water that flowed from his heart. So when you find yourself carrying the cross and then you're struggling and you're, you're like... Maybe you're depressed, or you're, maybe you feel like you're losing your zeal, or it's crushing you. We have to not let the cross crush us, but carry it. And not carry it alone, but carry it because Jesus is carrying it with us. And we have to look at Him carrying the cross. Otherwise, we may run away from our vocation. We may run away because it's difficult. 
For me personally, I, I, I knew I was called to be a Franciscan. I wanted to give my life completely to Jesus through the witness of St. Francis. But when it came time to join, the cross was getting heavy when I was being healed and I wanted to go do something else that wasn't so hard. And then I heard that gospel verse, if you um, want to follow me, pick up your cross and follow me. You know, I dropped the cross, I, I dragged it. That's when I probably struggled most with a little bit less joy. But when I look at him and see that he fell on the the weight of the cross, and he allowed Simon to help him carry the cross. We must let our brothers and sisters help us carry the cross, and we must let Jesus above all carry it with us, because he is God, we're human, and he'll give us the grace to carry it. If only we remain in him, if we abide in him. So it comes into a relationship with God, and uh, when you know God, you get to know, you know who you are, because he created you, and he will not lead you astray. He will open doors for you, and He will close doors for you, even though there may be struggles all around you, <laughs> and in you. So, and you will know uh, the doors that He's opened to you will have peace, and, uh, a, a lasting peace.